Who watched the week nine qualifiers? Huh? If not, hey, we're here to show you guys the most absolutely insane, mind-boggling performances from week nine of the Fortnite World Cup qualifiers. And if you already did, hey, we're here to show you the most absolutely <laughs> insane, mind-boggling performances so you could just relive them again and again and again because I'm telling you, they're just that good. These clips not only show you in-depth professionalism of these players, but it can also help you progress your game too. Oh, and by the way, hey, congratulations to PandaCraft XX Third for winning 4,000 V Bucks thanks to our contest sponsored by that Denver guy. All right, guys, let's get this thing going. Hey, this is Keith Allen, and let's do this. We all know how exhausting and rigorous these qualifiers are. I mean, you only get 10 games and a limit. Doing bad the first couple of games can make most people want to quit. Dozens of absurd players who practice day in and day out, all competing to earn a spot at the World Cup. These players set everything else aside, even to the point of skipping meals. The pressure and level of intensity in these matches are like nothing we've ever seen. Aside from many known names, I mean, we had a couple of players who demonstrated high-level performances throughout the finals, and we like to add some commentary and analysis to some of their insane games. If you want to reach the top level that many of these players have, visit ProGuides.com. I promise, man, you're going to get better. We have many breakdowns and courses from the masters themselves. Okay, first off, we have Mongrel. We haven't done a video covering him in a while, so we thought we'd show a recent insane clip of his from his past week. While Mongo did attain the reputation of being one of the best players alive, I mean, many people believed he was slowly fading into the shadows. But then this happened. Mongrel just qualified to come in at fifth place for solos. This gives him a double qualification spot. Before Mongrel took fame, people thought of him as a pub stumper without the ability to shine in top tier lobbies. But Mongrel has gone beyond that. I mean, he's qualified not only for the World Cup, but he's done a lot better than other top tier players have. In this first clip, we're gonna watch him make all the right moves from decision making, aiming, and building to come out as the winner. He starts off on low ground with 33 players left and emerges victorious. Clutching has always been a fan favorite, even in traditional sports. After this clip, we'll run over the tips and tricks Mongrel pulled off and show you how you can use them in your own games. Mongrel, he's on the far side of the safe zone with 33 players left. He has a solid loadout, but has run himself dry on max. The first thing a great player looks to do is replenish his health or material should he become low. He finds a player outside the circle and just non-stop sprays. The way Mongrel's playing this zone is just really special. He has no qualms playing the storm for a safe, easy rotate in. Most people expect players to be fleeing the storm, but Mongrel uses it to his advantage. See, here's the payoff. Mongrel is rewarded with yet another kill, replenishing the health he lost and giving him more materials. I have to say that's some crazy fast tunneling. You gotta practice that in playgrounds if you wanna get that good. Mongrel uses his available time to reload his weapons and formulate a plan. Always, always remember guys, impulsive plays can get you killed more often than not. I love how Mongrel's always looking for kills. In these top tier lobbies, I mean, winning through attrition and placement points is not going to cut it. The cutthroat competition is so fierce that without multiple kills per game, your efforts will be futile. Mongrel finds himself in a tough situation, so he sits around for a little bit. All right, let's get to the fun part. Mongrel easily puts all the basics we need to learn into action by taking advantage of players on low health. And just like that, he claims kill number six. With the middle ground, a decent amount of mats, and a good loadout, Mongrel is a predator looking for his next victim. Unfortunately, he has an enemy above him and below him, so this will put him at ease. Now let's take a look at positioning for a second. Mongrel on the mid ground with a lot of enemies beneath him, he really only has to worry about the guy above him. He can easily maintain position just by keeping his cool and there are enough enemies below him. So he doesn't have to worry about getting sprayed. Most of the enemies are killing each other and Mongrel wants no part of that. So he sits back, maintaining his awareness. He could easily just jump down and snag a few kills, but he's worried about high ground. Often the player with the most patient is rewarded and that's what we see in this case. Mongrel keeps the pressure on high ground to show his alpha status. Almost always when players are on the high ground, they fear falling down. Spraying above you can give you the upper edge. Now that Mongrel knows that there are only a few enemies left, he only has to wait for the stars to align. He finds the right moment and knows Nate isn't going to drop down anytime soon. Mongrel goes for it. And it's lights out for Maggle. 
This enemy really wasn't expecting Mongro to just jump down on him like that. Okay, now the moment we've all been waiting for. Mongro is in a 1v1 versus the high ground. They're both pretty equal on health, but in this situation, the high ground has the advantage. Mongro uses his available time to bandage up. He could have easily decided to spray up at his opponent, but he chose to go for the 50-50. He doesn't know how healthy his opponent is, so it's a bit risky. Who am I to tell him? He manages to pop the bandage and that's the deciding factor that wins in this game. Okay, there are a few takeaways that I want you guys to really learn from Mongrel's play here. Number one, always improvise. Although Mongrel had almost no materials in the beginning and low health, he kept the dream alive by going for eliminations and maintaining composure. You know, many of us, myself included, can't lie, <laughs> get frustrated and upset when things go bad. And it doesn't help at all. Number two, use any downtime to formulate a plan. Your end games are almost always gonna be hectic and you will have to play in a scenario which you didn't anticipate. Sometimes we fall victim to our picture perfect plays and having the ability to adapt goes a long way. Number three, do not be impulsive. By Mongo standards, I mean his style of play in these tournaments is very safe. A lot of players think going on full aggressive, W King everything they see will help them and it really won't. You need to make the right play, not the impulsive one. Now let's head into our next superstar, which is Phase Mega. We've heard the name before, however, this player has never come up in a competitive conversation. We think of him as just another good player, but I like to emphasize that he's more than that. He not only possesses Apex like game sense, but he's in league with some of the top tier pros like Mongrel. He has double qualification and both some of the most aggressive gameplay we've ever seen. The next clip of him really caught my eye. He puts many of the top players to shame. We're gonna watch him pop off hitting 20 eliminations in a pro top tier lobby. He not only has the absolute speed required to dominate at the top tier level, but he's also got the tricks up his sleeve too. Accurate decision making and fantastic reactionary plays are some of the many things you can learn from this player. Mega finds himself in a third one party lobby and is 12 points deep. When we see that kill count, we think of two things. Either this guy is an absolute beast or he's just W King and I assure you it's the latter. He starts off by pushing a player in a box. Top tier players can sense your fear and know if an enemy will be easier not to kill. Side tip, never show people that you're an incredibly passive player. Mega and others will take advantage of that. Mega is persistent and wants the extra elimination point. After he replaces the enemy's wall, he gets a pyramid in there too. This not only serves the purpose of preventing him from fighting back, but now his Fortnite fundamentals go down the drain. He still decides to play safe and he uses a wall edit trick to avoid return fire. You can see the sheer amount of confidence in Mega by him going for a flintlock play. One quality that I see that really stands out is his ability to reset edits very quickly. This is really important, especially when your enemy knows what he's doing. You have mere milliseconds in between shots to reset your wall or ramp before the shots connect. We've talked about how the scroll wheel edit reset is insane. If you don't know how to do it, check out our previous video on the top five best Fortnite settings here. One particular quality which I've noticed a lot of these pros have is that they are usually the last one to rotate in. I mean, the way Mega is playing the circle is really special. He only has to look forward. He uses his launch pad to get great positioning and he makes sure to double up in a box. The reason this method is so effective is that if somebody takes your wall, you can always expand into your secondary box. Now Mega's push here is debatable, but who am I to tell him that? He's a pure killing machine. Now this is music to Mega's ears. He hears a third party arriving. He knows if he doesn't push, he'll die a slow and painful death. He picks up the kill and here comes the third party. Mega realizes the walls aren't his, so traps are a no-go. He sees the enemy trying to break out and secures kill number 16. Hey guys, realizing when to push and when not to push are the hallmark of a really good player. Now for this next part, Mega sits around a little bit, so let's cut to the good stuff. Mega makes a tough call here. I mean, he can't just push anybody because everyone is waiting for the first person to strike. Mega tries rotating in and is caught off guard. This is where he can easily die and lose it all. But as I've mentioned time and time again, hey, good players don't lose or give up hope under pressure. They know how much money is on the line and they got the goal to win. Mega edits down on an enemy and finishes him with an insane flick. I don't know how he pulled that off. Guess this is why he's qualified twice. Fortunately enough, he has downtime. He's deciding what to do next. Two enemies are lurking above him and he's forced into another fight. He takes it quite easily because whose game is he trying to ruin? Mega notices everybody's above and the circle is rotating downhill. He creeps down and is the first one to rotate in. He hears his enemy shadow bomb down and locks under him like a laser. 
finishes him off and securing the game. The enemy was low and in the shadow bomb form. I mean, there was nothing you can do. What we love about Fortnite is that it's a game that revolves around decision making. An open sandbox game like Fortnite has endless possibilities. Now on the bright side, we have a few things you could take away from Mega's play here. So a few things stood out to me in this match. Number one, zone awareness. His awareness of the zone and how to play out close quarter fights is incredible. I mean, people are bound to make mistakes, and if you have all the moves up your sleeve as Mega does, you'll always emerge victoriously no matter what. Number two, W King late game made easy. He seems to know how to make W King and late game safe. Unlike many players who discourage it, it seems to work out for him. Number three, stay calm and don't break under pressure. When Mega got blasted to seven HP, he didn't give up, but instead kept fighting. Often we give up. We either have low HP, a bad loadout, or are just put in a tough situation. We've seen time and time again, pro players pull off crazy stunts and seemingly impossible scenarios. Hey, just because your situation looks bad, it doesn't mean it's so bad. Stay confident no matter what, and you will start winning games. Hey guys, once again, this is Keith Allen. Hope you enjoyed the video. Connect with me when you get a chance on my Instagram, because we have a lot more stuff coming out. Stay tuned.